Rectilinear motion, or linear motion, means the motion of an object along a straight line. For example, a particle moving left and right, or a ball going up and down. In this video, we'll see what the derivative and the second derivative tell us about the motion of an object constrained to move along a straight line. In this example, a particle is moving up and down along a straight line, and its position is given by this equation where the positive positions mean that the particle is above its baseline position, whatever I'm calling position zero, and negative positions mean the particle is below this baseline position. I'm asked to find s prime of t and s double prime of t, so by deriving I get 4t cubed minus 16t squared plus 12t for the first derivative, and 12t squared minus 32t plus 12 for the second derivative. s prime of t, which can also be written dstd, represents the instantaneous rate of change of s of t, the position over time. Well, the change in position over time is just the velocity. And this can also be written as v of t s double prime of t, the second derivative of s with respect to t, can also be thought of as the derivative of the velocity function. So that represents the rate of change of velocity over time, how fast the velocity is increasing or decreasing. And that is called acceleration. And it can be written as a of t. Like position, velocity and acceleration can be both positive and negative. A positive velocity means the position is increasing, so the particle is moving up, while a negative velocity means the position is decreasing, so the particle is moving down. And of course, a velocity of zero means the particle's at rest, at least for that instant. From physics, we know that force equals mass times acceleration. So if the acceleration is positive, then that means the force is in the positive direction. It's like the particle is being pulled up. If, on the other hand, the acceleration is negative, then the force is in the negative direction, and it's like the particle is being pulled down. An acceleration of zero means there's no force on the particle at that instant, and the velocity continues as is. Let's use these ideas about velocity and acceleration and the following table of values to describe the particle's motion at time equals 1.5 seconds. At time 1.5 seconds, the position of the particle is positive, so that means the particle is above its baseline position of zero. Its velocity is negative, so that means that its position is decreasing. In other words, the particle is moving down. Its acceleration is negative. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so a negative acceleration means the velocity is decreasing. Well, a negative velocity that's decreasing is getting more and more negative. So, in fact, the particle is moving down faster and faster. This can be a little bit confusing, because even though the velocity is decreasing, it's getting more and more negative, the speed, which is the absolute value of velocity, is increasing. We can also see what the particle is doing at 1.5 seconds by looking at this graph, where the time is drawn on the x-axis and position s of t is on the y-axis. From the graph, we can see that when t is zero, s of t is also zero, so the particle starts at its baseline position of zero. At time 1.5 seconds, the particle is above this starting position, but moving downwards. And since the slope of this graph is getting steeper and steeper, we can conclude that the speed of the particle is increasing. Same thing as we concluded from the table of values. Now let's do the same analysis when time is 2.5 seconds. 
s of 2.5 seconds is negative, so the particle is below its starting position. Velocity s prime of t is also negative, so the particle is still going down. But now the acceleration s double prime of t is positive. That means that the velocity is increasing. Well, a negative velocity that's increasing is getting less negative, closer to zero. So the particle must be slowing down. And in fact, the speed is decreasing. Again, the graph agrees with this reasoning. At 2.5 seconds, our position is way down here. Our graph is decreasing, so the particle's moving down. And the slope seems to be leveling off, so the particle speed is decreasing. Even though its velocity, which you can think of as speed with direction, is increasing simply because it's a negative velocity that's getting less negative. Notice that in the first example, when velocity and acceleration are both in the same direction, that is, they're both negative, the particle was speeding up. And in the second example, where velocity and acceleration were in the opposite directions, one positive, one negative, the particle is slowing down. This is true in general. When velocity and acceleration have the same sign, that is, they're both positive or both negative, then the particle is speeding up. And when velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, then the particle is slowing down. One way to think about this is in terms of force. Force is in the same direction as acceleration. So if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, that means force is the same direction as the particle is already going, so it's making the particle speed up. But if velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, then the force is going against the way the particle is moving, so it's causing it to slow down. Let's continue the same example with some more questions. It'll be helpful to write down the velocity and acceleration functions that we calculated earlier. I've also graphed position, velocity, and acceleration here at the right. And before you go on, it's a fun exercise to figure out which one is which, without even looking at the equations, just based on the shapes of the graphs and where they're increasing, where they're decreasing, where they're positive, and where they're negative. Velocity is the derivative of position, so velocity needs to be positive where position is increasing. The only pairs of functions that have this property are the blue one that's positive when the red one's increasing, and the green function, which is positive when the blue one is increasing. Now acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity, also needs to be positive when velocity is increasing. So the only way to correctly label the functions with both of these relationships is to make the red one be position, the blue one be velocity, and the green one be acceleration. This agrees with the equations that we have over here. The first question asks, when is the particle at rest? The particle is temporarily at rest when the velocity is zero. In other words, s prime of t is zero. So plugging in the equation for s prime of t, we can factor out a 4t and factor some more to conclude that t has to be 0, 1, or 3. This conclusion agrees with our graph of v of t, which has x-intercepts at 0, 1, and 3. And it also agrees with our graph of position s of t, since the particle stops for a moment to change direction when t equals 0, 1, and 3. The particle is moving up when velocity is positive and moving down when velocity is negative. Since we know from the previous question that velocity equals 0 when t equals 0, 1, and 3, we can look in between those values to figure out whether the velocity is positive or negative just by plugging in values. So for example, when t is negative 1, if I plug in to the negative 1 to the equation for velocity, I get a negative number. So velocity must be negative when t is less than 0. Between 0 and 1, if I plug in, for example, t equals 1 half, 
I get a value of S prime of t or V of t of 2.5, which is a positive number. If I plug in a value of t in between 1 and 3, say t equals 2, I get a value of V of t of negative 8, which is a negative number. And finally, if I plug in a value of t greater than 3, say 4, I get a positive answer for V of t. So from this sign chart, I see that V of t is negative when t is between negative infinity and 0 and in between 1 and 3, and V of t is positive when t is between 0 and 1 and between 3 and infinity. Of course, I could have reached the same conclusion just by looking at the graph of velocity and where it's above and below the x-axis, or even by looking at the graph of position and seeing where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. To answer the next question, the particle will be speeding up when v of t and a of t are both positive or both negative. And the particle will be slowing down when v of t and a of t have opposite signs. So let's make a similar sign chart to figure out where a of t is positive and negative. First, it'll be helpful to find out where a of t is 0. So if I set 0 equal to my s double prime, that's 12t squared minus 32t plus 12, I could factor out a 4 and then use the quadratic equation to find the solution since this equation doesn't factor easily. This simplifies to 4 thirds plus or minus the square root of 7 over 3, which is approximately 0 0.45 and 2.22. Now I can build a similar sign chart for acceleration. I'll mark the places where acceleration is 0 and plug in values of t, say t equals 0, into the equation for acceleration, I get a positive answer here. When I plug in, say, t equals 1, I get a negative answer here. And when I plug in, say, t equals 3, I get another positive answer here. Now if I put this together with my velocity chart, which changed sign at 0, 1, and 3, and went from negative to positive to negative to positive, I can try to figure out where velocity and acceleration both have the same sign. It might be helpful actually to shade in where acceleration is positive and separately shade in where velocity is positive and then look for the places where both are shaded, so between 0 and 4.5 and greater than 3. And then I can also look where both are unshaded. That looks like in between 1 and 2.22, so that's where they're both negative. And then I'll know that V of t and A of t have opposite signs everywhere else. A slightly better answer will use exact values of 4 thirds plus or minus square root of 7 thirds instead of these decimal approximations. So let me write that down. So here is where the particle is speeding up, and here it's where it's slowing down. We can check our work by looking at the graph of position. The particle is speeding up where the position graph is getting steeper and steeper. That's the red graph. It's getting steeper and steeper here, here, and here, just like we found algebraically. As our final example, let's look at net change in position and distance traveled between one and four seconds for this same particle. At time one second, position is five thirds, or about 1.67 millimeters. At time 4, its position is given by 32 thirds, or about 10.67 millimeters. All I'm doing is plugging 1 and 4 into this equation. So the net change in position is just the difference of these two numbers. 
S of 4 minus S of 1, which is 9 millimeters. At first glance, it might seem like the total distance traveled between 1 and 4 seconds should also be 9 millimeters, but actually it's a little more complicated because the particle switches direction during that time period. It doesn't go straight from its position at 1 second to its position at 4 seconds. Remember what the graph of position looked like. The particle switches direction at 1 second and at 3 seconds, so to find the total distance, we need the distance that travels from 1 second to 3 seconds plus the distance that travels from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. Another way of thinking about this is that we need the absolute value of S3 minus S1 plus the absolute value of S4 minus S3. We need these absolute value signs because this difference in position will be negative instead of positive when the particle is moving down. Plugging in the T values into our equation, we get negative 27 minus 5 thirds plus the absolute value of 32 thirds minus negative 27, which is a total of 199 thirds or 66.3 repeating millimeters. Quite a bit more than the 9 millimeter difference of position. This video gave an in depth analysis of a particle moving up and down along a straight line. A similar analysis could be done for a particle moving left and right along a straight line, where a positive position means the particle is on the right side, and a negative position means the particle is on the left side of its baseline position. Of course, the same analysis can be done for other objects, not just particles. A typical application is to a ball being thrown straight up and then falling down again.